All right, sorry guys, we've been a little, we have less people and somehow we talked longer. So I apologize, <laughs> we're going to open the public portion of the meeting with a pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we'll do, yeah, sorry. You're so far. I'm like, we'll see what's different. All right. All right. I got it. So I guess we'll review them after. after. But if somebody, and I warned these guys, they have to have their motion and second game on point tonight because they got to do a lot of it. All right. right. Oh. <laughs> So is there a motion to accept this? So move. Yes. Is there a second? Thanks, Ray. Always in favor. Aye. Any opposed? Thanks for it. Minutes of meeting. Regular meeting on 518. I'm accepting. Oh, so fast. Does anybody have any yes. items? I sent you the one. Yes, thank you. I found nothing that needed to be shown. Okay. Well, then hope, hope's on it. She, she yes. motion. Is there a second? <laughs> Thanks, Kate. All those in favor? Uh, any opposed? So, treasurer's reports. Thank you for your light. Oh, yeah, you just need to go grab some notes. Oh, I was going to thank her. Nice, fast answers today. Um, is there a motion to put you to be separate? The treasurer's report? Well, I'm not quick enough. No. Is there a second? I'll second. Thanks, right? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. So now the appropriation transfers. Their motion on the appropriation transfers. Sure. Thanks, Greg. Is there a second? <laughs> Thanks, Kate. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any votes? We're getting there. Okay, warrants we can bundle together. So we will start with the general fund. Wordy. <clears throat> Infinity Technology Solutions, do we know so what that technology is? company that helps with our switching and they, they help design and build the network. Okay. Um, when we did the building project and we had an outage uh, in April and they had to come down on site to mm -hmm. sort of help troubleshoot that and then shortly thereafter they had to come down again, um, but that was scheduled maintenance. We had a um, one of the uh, switches was bad, even though they have, we have the Ruba switches that we purchased have a hundred year life on them, amazingly. Um, so when they go bad, they can, we can swap them out and then they send us a new one. Uh, so they come and do that and uh, apply firmware upgrades to all of the network closets. So they're more hardware than software? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They help manage the, all the, the hardware and, and getting everything to work together. They help Mike a lot. <clears throat> I think it's my other question. So, is there any motion to? Well, wait, no, I'm way ahead. Sorry. Next up, Federal Funds 14. My bad, guys. And then school lunch fund 12. The federal funds. The question I have on Cornell University, RCCP, uh, the travel. Did we send people there or did they come here and 
It's Esher. It's Esher related. We did send a group of kids. Oh, here comes Chris. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe. I in. Oh, is this the Alabama? Maybe they didn't. No, it's not. When was the dinner? Doesn't doesn't say. No, it's uh, uh, it's on the uh, federal funds. It's a second entry. Cornell University RCCP. That's a void for one thing. Well, the top one's a void. Yeah, the top one's a void. Oh, they replaced it. Yeah. I know the varsity club went there oh, with some rock climbing wall and things like that. I don't know if that was a, yeah, I, it says travel. I don't know if we had professional development there. I, you know, we sent people out. But. I, I don't, not that I can recall, I don't believe it was professional development. It, it, it implies that they're coming out of the essence. It's the TCI training. TCI training. Oh. And oh. Um, there, were, there was a void of the check because it got lost in the mail. It happened way back in December. January, February, yeah, yeah, yeah December. Um, so it was a reissue of a check. So, okay. but it was adults. What so is it's the therapeutic training? crisis intervention for okay. schools? Thank okay. you. Yeah, I'll remember that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now school is twelve. <laughs> <laughs> And then just one guy, one check, sizable check, but just one check on the capital fund for some buses, which Holly's not here, but gosh, I hope they get here for like, you know, 18 months from now this uh, time. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so is there a motion to approve all four of those? So <laughs> I'll give you take your a pick. breath. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Absolutely. Recognition of visitors. Hi, visitors. Hi. We have lots tonight. <laughs> they all remember the board tonight. Yes, seriously. <laughs> they so, don't seem hostile, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I invited Aaron Pennis, Ashley Martel, and Shannon Tubbs. <laughs> And Sarah Loomis, I think Sarah was going to be here anyway, but I asked, I invited them to be here tonight just because they are three of the four teachers in the front row that are implementing the phonics for reading program. I've talked about it. I think I started talking about it in November. So I just thought instead of me trying to explain what's actually happening in the classroom, how about we have the people that are doing the work show up and talk about they're going to talk a little bit about the program, but also just how the students are doing. So let me get this going. Control and the little window thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Help. laughs> you said screenshot. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also promised them I would start off, give the disclaimer. This is not a formal presentation. This is just us sharing information. So came up with a catchy title, Students Find Reading Success. And what we want to talk about is the explicit phonics instruction program, which is the phonics for reading. And then how did the Mid-State RPC Region, Regional Partnership Center help us over the last five months, four to five months um, with progress monitoring and intensive intervention? So who are we talking about? 18-ish students with disabilities in special classes, so four special classes, one at the primary level with Kelly O'Brien, intermediate level with Shannon Tubbs, junior high with Aaron Thomas, and then at the um, secondary level with Ashley Martel. And these are students, so they, they're identified um, needing special ed support, they're in a special reading class, but we've also learned through our iReady data, these are students that struggle with phonics, so decoding and reading fluency, which obviously um, has an impact on reading comprehension. So the what, what have we been doing? 
daily or each day they have been almost every day have been instructing phonics for reading program they do weekly progress monitoring daily they are preparing it's an intensified reading fluency intervention which they're going to talk about and also goal setting with the kids so let me back up the daily phonics for reading instruction and again i've been I referenced this, I think it was in November, we placed the order. We were looking for a program, something that the teachers could use that was research-based, um, science of reading aligned, and that explicit direct instruction around phonics that would meet the needs. And the program is meant for students in grade, well, from third grade through adults, and it's meant to be an intervention program. And these students, this is their core instruction, it is an intervention program, but because it's such an explicit phonics process, that's what they needed. So, so I want to talk, I'm going to have them talk a little bit about phonics for reading. When we first started, we had to give the placement test and we just jumped right in. So Ashley, if you can talk a little bit and then I'm going to chart, talk a little bit about the placement test. Um, so what you do is there is a subtest. I think it runs A through H or farther. I'm not, I can't really remember. Um, but the students are given lists of words and they have to read through them. Um, they start off with one syllable words and then move to two and you monitor them and see how far they get. Um, my particular, I think this is one of my students actually up there right now, they have to score an 80% or higher. Um, so they have to get 14 out of 18 correct. Um, you can give them, so for like the two syllable words, you can give them credit if they get one of the syllables but miss the other. Um, but they have to get that 14 out of 18 in order to move on. So if they got the 80%, you would move on to the next subtest letter. And if they don't, then you stop and that's where they are. Um, under each subtest, it tells you what lessons to start on and where, like what areas those kids are struggling with. So that was how we were able to decide where our kids needed to start. Like there's three different books. Um, so we were able to determine where they needed to start in the book based on that. All right. So the next step of how, uh, so we, once they were able to start with the program, start with the students, we needed to progress monitor. We also, they, we, <coughs> Matt, the royal we, right? Mm -hmm. um, the teachers uh, provided that intensified intervention and also the goal setting. So, and again, Ashley, if you can talk yeah. a little bit, what does the progress monitoring? What so is, we started doing? off with just the phonics for reading um, instruction that was in the books and realized in working with the Mid-State Regional Partnership that it wasn't enough. Um, our kids also needed to be reading passages every day. Um, so every Friday, <clears throat> we used easycbm.com. It gives us passage reading fluency that you monitor the kids, you time them for a minute and see how far they can read. Um, so every Friday, they do something called a cold read. So it's a passage they've never seen before. They read it through the first time, and that's like their baseline. And then they'll continue to read it on throughout the next week to continue practicing and build the word fluency and sentence fluency um and all of that jazz and then um we base so we we will practice it throughout the week but we only really look at the cold reads just to see whether or not they need to level up or if we need to keep them where they're at so that's the progress monitoring shanna when um ashley said and all that jazz what happened for those interventions throughout the week give us some ideas of what would you do the three of you do with your students yeah daily so the jazz was that we would <laughs> friday with our cold read and then monday we would meet together and we would read it it could be a variety of things but it was kind of gauged upon what a student needed but we um we would do it where we would read it one-on-one -on -one with a teacher and we could go over what mistakes they made and really talk about that give them that intensive time just the one-on-one -on -one to really work on their decoding skills the next day they could do it with, read with a partner there was um like they would have a few minutes to read independently and then we would group read together because it tended to be a lot of us were on the same level as the time went on some of them did have a farther stretch than others so then it would be the whole group really wasn't as much of an option, but there usually was a partner that they could read with. Um, yeah, and it was 
it was nice in a way that a lot of the EGCBM, because we started at a first grade level, mm -hmm. so in so was our phonics and reading. So it tended to be a lot of the same patterns in words for what we would see in the EGCBM fluency reads. So it was either it would be a precursor to what they would see in the next lesson or another practice of what they've already been working on as far as blends and vowel sounds. So it just kind of tied it all in nicely with them. It was also super nice because all, no matter what level they were on, that reading passage would look the same for all kids. Mm -hmm. So a first grade passage would have a whole page, like a whole pair, page of words, and then you could get to a fifth grade level and it would still look the same. So the kids had no idea mm -hmm. who was on what level. And that, that's contrary to what we had been using. Yeah. Before, where they could really tell that it would be singled out in a way if, if they weren't at the same level. Where, yeah, it did all, it did all tie in. How many and kids do you have in a class so they can do this one on one? It varies. Um, I had five. I have seven. And I had um, I had three in one group and five in another. And Kelly had at one point she had twelve, and then we had to divide them out. And I think she had seven in the uh -huh. primary, no. but she also had an eight in a row okay. that could help. Erin, okay. do you want to yes. just talk a little bit about goal setting with the kids? What did yeah. that? So that looked like um, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna forward through because I think we have a good uh, let's see maybe that one mm -hmm. yep yep so every week or every day when we did the reading we wanted them to go a little bit further down the page of words per minute um, and then there would be different sections um, at the end of the week that we would once they got there then we would go on to the next section um, but here it has um, the grade levels that they should be at and the words per minute that they should be reading at um, once they've reached that level then we could move on to the next grade level so for I think four or five weeks maybe four weeks we kind of stayed at the same grade level mm -hmm. and then we met again and um, we decided that let's try the next grade level and see how they did. Well, all of our kids improved. Um, actually, we all went up one or two grade levels by the end of, um, which we can talk about later, um, by the end of our uh, testing, which was great. Um, and so the kids really, as far as like, um, when they would come in on Friday and have to read the words, they would kind of get a little like antsy. My kids would get a little antsy because it was something new that they were reading. But then come Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, their fluency is great. They're excited. They're seeing that they're moving down the page um, in their reading. So it really gave them the confidence to want to continue to do it. So how, what progress have we seen? So this is a student, and this would be one of Kelly's students. Um, so when they talked about the meetings, when they came back together, it, we had monthly meetings with representatives from the RPC. And they were the ones that were guiding us through this work of progress monitoring, how to intensify the intervention. And either Sarah and I together would be with the teachers or one month it was just me, one month it was Sarah. And this was, how do we show you know, the progress? Because each month they would talk about like, well, they've made gains. And sometimes it's like little gains and maybe it comes back, but the, the pattern or the trend. But this is a second or third grade, one of the, the students from Kelly's group. At the bottom, the numbers represent, and oh, and by the way, um, the upper grades did word fluency or sentence fluency. Kelly's class did letter sound fluency. So they, they're just focused on the letter sounds. So the numbers at the bottom represent how many letters they were able to accurately um, Per, let's see what I want to say, connect with the sound per minute. So it's the same kind of probe, but it's just give the letter, hear the sound, be able to say which letter. Week one, and this is at a first, or well, this is a second, third grade student, but I believe this particular student, it was a kindergarten fluency. Week one, they were just probably 21 words or letter sounds. And by week six, about 44, 45. So they were improving that. Sixth grade special class, Shanna, this is one of your students. Yeah, so um, this particular student, she had been at a first grade reading level for, the, I was fortunate enough to have her for a few years, um, bits and pieces. But so since I've known her, she has been reading at a first grade level. 
so we started there and like to um Aaron had said for a while we just about a month we kept it with just the first grade level probe so um once we revisited it um she was able to try to the second grade level um and then towards the end so if you can look at it, it looks like it goes yes just, yep it's blue right is first grade red is second, red is second and, and then, then yellow is, is third, third grade so it looks like it's going it's decreasing but really what it is based off of the correct word per minute chart that was given to us by the mid-state um that's where they should be to be able to move on to the next level so she really could be scooching her way even towards the fourth grade level um moving forward and um so with that we've seen quite a, a, a great deal of growth and we had our our um last i ready diagnostic and she went up 49 points in biological awareness which is where she was really struggling beforehand so a lot of growth that's this school year since fact this is just since february Got a magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> like it. I mean, Mid State kept warning us. They're like, Kim, they will plateau. And I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too anyway. uh, let's see, Erin. Yeah. This particular student of yours. Um, so this is my eighth grade student who um, hated to read, did not want to read in class, would not, um, never, whenever I asked, no, I don't want to do it. Um, by the end of school, uh, the last two weeks, I want to go first, like, let me go first. I'm excited. I want to read. Um, he also, when he, he was my biggest um, wanting champion, wanted to get down to the end of the page and, and did it very well and was super excited, set goals every week. So he started out at a second grade reading, uh, reading level and ended up in the fourth grade reading level. Wow. Well done. And Ashley. Um, this, I, I kind of had a unique perspective on this. Um, a few years ago, I moved from fifth grade and came up to the high school. So I have some of my old fifth graders that I used to have. <laughs> um, and this particular student I had in fifth grade um, struggled then with reading, kind of didn't make much progress. Um, but as you can see, just like Shanna said, started at that first grade level. Um, we kind of stayed there till we met with the, with the Mid-State Regional Partnership and then kind of built from there. Um, the last piece of data on this was third grade, but I actually, um, just in the past couple weeks, he moved up to fourth grade and we retested the subtest. So the first time he took the subtest was February 10th. He could not get past subtest A. We stopped because he just could not read those. He made it to subtest E this time. So it was really, it was really exciting. Um, I think a mixture of the phonics for reading and the daily reading that we did with the kids really made them buy into it. I think they saw their progress. I think it just, I don't know, it made them feel accomplished. And I think that's, that's why we've seen so much success with it is because they have the data to say, Hey, I went from this to this. Um, and we always made a big deal about them leveling up. We talked about it. Um, I had to have kind of a really honest talk with my kids because I have nine through 12 and some of their iReady scores came out like kindergarten through third grade when we did it. Um, so before they graduate, obviously, we want them to get to a point where they can at least read and comprehend independently. So this was, like I said, this was really eye opening. This particular student, super proud of um, all of my kids, though, really improved. So it was, it's been a it's been really fun to to go through and watch the kids and their work. Mm -hmm. Actually, what else? So the question I was going to say, like, what do you, you talked a little bit about what made the difference and you talked about data. Is there anything else that you want to say? Because earlier that was the, the topic that you felt strongly about. Um, I would just say the consistency of it. Like my kids came to class every day and knew what to expect. Like they knew they were going to be able to practice their reading fluency passage. They were going to read it with me, see how far they got. And then we were going to go into the phonics for reading book. And you were talking about the, the same thing. I think the predictability of it all. And I think at first we were a little concerned that it was going to feel redundant to them, but they thrived in that. They really loved to know what to expect and knowing that, oh, here comes my comp piece and yeah. here comes where we can work on our spelling words and our challenge words. And um, it, so much of the day, I think that they, they shared with us that they kind of felt a little a little lost. Like things were challenging for them, right? And um, challenge is a good thing, but this was a part where they felt challenged but also could feel confident <clears throat> and successful and grow. So this was a exciting part of their day yeah. to come and do this.
And this, these are just sample students, but every student in the, the special classes made growth. I was trying to figure out like how to do one chart with all of the kids to say from first, second, third, you know, whatever grade level, but I kind of figured that out. Yeah. Uh, maybe Chris can help me. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, this is very exciting. I guess, do you have already in your head like things you might tweak for next year to, or oh, because next year you have the full year to do it, right? Because yeah, well, so. Oh, I, wait, time out, sorry. <laughs> Appreciate what you've done and <laughs> um, all of our kids, well, my kids at least started in that very first book. So there's still two more. Um, I think we only got really to consonant blends and consonant digraphs. So the, I mean, it's, it goes much bigger from there, the vowel patterns and all of that. So I think just continuing with that and then um, the Mid-State Regional Partnership was really good. They gave us some really good insight and some really good strategies to use, I think, to improve our instruction. And the data that we got drove the instruction, which I think, like, because like Shanna said earlier, just pulling bits and pieces and then not seeing it work, it's kind of defeating as a teacher. But when you finally get something that has all the pieces you need and can have the data to back it up and really prove that it's working, it just, it makes everybody feel better, not just the kids. That data was huge, too. It was, first of all, it was what we were looking for, the pieces that we've been grabbing here and there, and that was all just in a lovely, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but then to have that data and say, oh, this is where we really need to direct our instruction more, inten you know, more intensely with this specific student, or, oh, wow, look how far you've come. You know, yeah. that, that was just so nice to have all of these forms of data um, given to us with, with the support of, of Mid-State to really keep going with them and making them feel confident in their learning. Yeah. Are they back for next year, or how does that? We haven't heard officially yet. Okay. They, I'm hoping, um, but they did, they did share with us in their department. Um, <laughs> they, we could find ways if they're not officially, if we're not officially on their list to support. Um, they, they're happy to find ways to continue to support. We may have to open any kind of PD up to maybe other districts. That's okay. We're happy to do that. But it, it's been, and the two, the one is, her name is Jill Scatina. She's done a fabulous job. She's a good fit for us. And I, so I don't know who some of the other people are. And Madeline Mannheim is um, one of the special ed trainers. And she's been down, I think, the last meeting, but she's also going to be down next week just to talk some special ed stuff with us. The beauty is if this continues is as kids move from one group to another, they're walking into a classroom that was very similar to the one that had before. So it's a yeah, consistency yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. You've done good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. You three are free to go. Okay. Uh, thank thank you, you for being here to share. Thank you. Guys thank you. Said it thank much you. better than I could have. <laughs> And thank you for letting us take some time to share. Because we are pretty excited. That's um, fantastic. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> the meeting's back to you guys. <laughs> We do have other guests, but our other guests like to say anything at this is this guest recognition time. We'll wait till the end. <laughs> I have a few things to say now or later. I don't care. Go for it. Okay. Um, so I'm here for presenting the PTA, PTSA. Um, so just to kind of go over kind of what we've done, what's coming up. Um, I wasn't at the main meeting, so I'll cover some of that stuff. Um, we had an ice cream party, um, ice cream parties for about half of the elementary school. Um, and that was from the, that was like their prize from the fundraiser that we had done with the, um, the cheesecakes. So um, I think that went pretty well because we're happy with ice cream. Um, we did a full week of teacher appreciation week things for both buildings. So we had something um, each day. So five days we had something. We did like lunch. We had chair massages. We had snacks and desserts. So um, I, I heard good things. I think they were overall happy. We have to, you know, tweak some things for next year. But overall, I think it was um, was appreciated and definitely well deserved. So we were happy to do that. Um, we threw two dances in May, a 7th and 8th grade dance and a 5th and 6th grade dance. 
And then in June, we had our first movie night uh, last Friday. So I know I saw some of you there. So that was fun. And the, the rain held off. So that was a success. So um, I think we might try to do one again on maybe the summer or close to the start of the, the school year. But uh, we definitely want to do it again. Now that we know how we're working, it wasn't too hard. And we'd like to do that again. Um, field day is coming up um, in elementary school. Um, so we were helping out with that. We're going to have four volunteers from the PTSA there during field day to kind of help out with things. Um, we also help with funding um, some of the, the things that are going on that day, like the, the bounce houses that we pay for. So we're happy to help contribute to that. Um, we're having bingo night at Punks, our last one of the school year, on June 21st, 6 to 8. It's going to be a combination of regular bingo and one-hit wonder bingo. So if you want to come out for our last one. And uh, our meeting for this month is June 20th. Uh, it's right here at 6.30. Um, our fiscal year starts July 1st. Um, so at this meeting, we'll be voting for our new officers for um, for the next school year. And <laughs> um, where else about putting? Yeah. Oh, and then, so well, then we'll start taking memberships, new memberships for the next school year. So 23, 24 will start in July. So we'll start doing, um, hopefully July will be a little quiet, but I know we're going to meet and start probably gearing up again in August on things. So jump right into the school year in September. So that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Um, and you guys are not on the same wavelength, but Pete last month when he was here made a specific point to call out the PTSA and how helpful and wonderful you guys have been to work with. So I was like, ah, oh, she's not here to hear it. One of the few meetings I missed. I know. <laughs> you had you had a you had excellent uh, reason not to be yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just wanted to relay that along. Pete did give you a specific <laughs> thank you for, for the PTSA support and that you guys have done everything that he has approached you with. So that's it's really supportive. Okay. <laughs> Sarah, anything? Uh, yeah, we should do that. No, I'll wait for that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we are back to consent agenda. <clears throat> As as amended. Yes. <laughs> Two things taken off. Yeah. Oh. Um, is there anything anybody wants pulled out for such consideration? And then of course are there any questions? We don't have any difficulty filling a couple of the slots that were open. Uh, I mean, other than restructuring maybe department workload or teacher workload, are we going to be hiring people for some of these spots? We will be hiring for some of the spots for sure. And will we have any trouble? Gosh, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Um, we have had applications, certified people for a couple of positions that are open. Um, we interviewed an elementary, no, we didn't. Um, the team over at the elementary school interviewed an elementary teacher uh, today that they were very impressed with, and we'll be doing a follow up interview on Tuesday. So I'm really sincerely optimistic that we've kind of turned a corner from those uh, times where you just couldn't find anybody anywhere. Mm -hmm. So hopefully some people are still going into education. Yeah, you in college. Yeah. Yeah. And you are already canvassing for Pat Galuli's. I mean, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, we have fourth grade still open and Pat's and just trying to figure out what to do with the, the students that don't that we don't have outside placements for. So the, the job, the 2.0 job Pat did this year. Um, seeing what we're going to do. So yes, as of Friday, I think I screened, not just me, but I think 20 applicants, some certified, some not, um, some yeah. more promising than others. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. So yeah, elementary might be a okay. special. It's going to be a little tough, I think. So I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Um, is there a, a motion to approve the consent agenda? There aren't any further questions. Great. Is there a second? Second. 
Okay, that second. All those in favor? Ah, any opposed? Yeah. Okay. All right, we did it. You did it. You did it, guys. Thank you. For all your motioning and seconding. Now, now we get to listen. <laughs> Mr. Wayne. Oh. Each year, I like to share the fruits of our partnership with the TC3 College Now program. Um, it's, it's really amazing to think this opportunity is available for our students. Um, this year's graduating cohort has earned 1,092 college credits. And because TC3 is in the SUNY system, all of these credits that have been earned, if they go to a SUNY school, carries to that school. So I always try to base it on the tuition from Portland. It's just a nearby SUNY four-year school. They charge $295 for a, a credit. That's saving our taxpayers and families $322,140 just from this cohort alone. When I say save that, that's only tuition. It's not including the more expensive stuff, which is room and board. That, you know, a lot of these kids, we had a student this year, the, I think it was 71 credits, it may be more that he's earned through the College Now program. And he's He's a year and a half away from a bachelor's degree. Um, it's, it's just an amazing opportunity. DC3 has been a great partner. They really do their best to, to meet the needs of our students. And I'm, I'm just glad we can offer that. And think, you know, thinking about, we've been offering concurrent enrollment courses since I've been principal. It's my 13th year. And I know Ryan was before me. Millions of dollars we saved our taxpayers through this program. And tuition costs and, and room and board. So it's just a great program. And I'm pleased we can offer and I'm pleased our students are taking advantage of it. They really are. And to think this year we have five students who've already earned their associate's degree before they walked in their high school commencement. That's impressive. So I really commend this senior class. They've done a great job. Uh, thank TC3 for offering this opportunity to our students. And, and I'm just glad, again, I'm just so thankful we have it for them. So I like, I always enjoy sharing that. Um, I just wanna do a little summary of our academic intervention, MTSS. Um, you know, this year is our first year of having the learning labs and our tier system of support for our students. And I guess the best, the best thing I can share with you is that our teachers said it was a success. They think it, they thought it was beneficial for our students. Um, it was progress. It wasn't perfect, it was progress. Um, I asked them, give me some feedback on what we can do to make it better. And I got some very constructive feedback from our teachers. What's very interesting is our, our junior high teachers and team have done something different than the senior high. Um, the junior highs, they, they utilize iReady and they take the data from iReady to really decide where to tier their students. And so those students that they're having in their tier three with the, the heaviest intervention is focused on foundational skills. Um, the high school based theirs on students failing, how many courses they're failing, and their interventions based on how many courses they're failing. So our tier three intervention there helps these kids that are falling behind their coursework or are kind of a little lackadaisical on their homework. In the high school, tier three helps them get, let's get going, helps them get their work done. And so they're, so hopefully they're, they're not failing as many or hopefully eventually not failing any. Um, but the senior high said, boy, it's really, it'd be really great if we could have something to work on these foundational skills like the junior high teachers have. You know, because some of these kids really need to, in order for them to be truly successful, we got to work on those foundational skills. The junior high teachers are saying, well, it's great that we can work these foundational skills. We've got these kids that are failing because they're not doing any homework. It'd be great if we had something like the senior high. So we, and then finding time. That's yeah. the question. Where do you find time in the day to do both? So that's something that I'm going to be pondering over the summer. And we have, you know, we'll be talking about as a team, see what can we do to, to offer both both types of support for our students, both junior high and senior high. But like I said, this year was progress. And the teachers are they're in support of it. 
that's that's the most important thing. If they're in support of it, you can you can make even further progress and keep it going. So I'm pleased to share that. Um, lastly, uh, the commencement ceremony, the graduation of the class of 2023. Um, it says we have 49 graduates. I think we might have 52. I gotta check. I don't know where I got that number. But anywhere, anywhere from 49 to 52. I'll surprise you when we get there. Um, but hopefully you can be there on the 23rd. It's out in the stadium field. It's always a very nice event, um, lifetime event, really. So. I welcome you to be there and share on that special occasion. Thank you. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Okay. Um, no piece tonight. We have a report. And Matt. So uh, this is January or June is a. Uh, a very busy month. What month is that? Yeah, January. <laughs> just, just the last couple of days, I actually was wishing it was January because um, we're collecting every single Chromebook um, from res reticent students. Um, but they're using them for a review, using them for um, their last little bit of homework that they're trying to catch up on, some of them. Um, and We've, I've collected probably three quarters of them um, so far. I expect to get about 90% of them, 95% of them back before the end of next week. Um, and we'll track down the rest of them. But it's a great opportunity to um, to get the devices in, get them clean, make sure they're, they're work in work, good working order um, and stored appropriately over the summer. Um, seniors that are leaving are training their devices in and I, I do have some devices that are have reached the end of the, our use their useful life for us, but are still useful. So um, I'm, I've offered them to seniors, uh, and I've got five or six of them that have taken that taken that um, opportunity. And so they have a device if they're going to school or if they're just using it at home. So it's one less expense um, that they have when they, they go on to school. Um, it'll last them another year or so. Um, and then they will have to get their own, but it's a nice transition for them. Uh, and so it'll it'll be a, a good opportunity for us to, to get the devices back in and, and get them clean with our, our summer workers. So um, excited to have those uh, four, um, five, six. It, it, the numbers are a little bit um, squishy right now um, based on summer schedules. Their summer schedules are busy. Some are um, doing college now. Uh, some have driver's ed, et cetera. So um, I tried to have uh, enough students so that they could fill, my ideal would be have, having four students um, for four weeks. And so I think having five or six, I'll be able to get that um, with, with their busy schedules. So uh, they're, they're very excited. Um, all but one are students that have worked for me before, which is great. Um, and so um, looking forward to that. Um, one thing that I wanted to add that was in your consent agenda that was added was the Smart Schools Bond Act um, proposal. And just to, to give you just a heads up on, on what that, that is about. Um, the Smart Schools, if you remember, Smart Schools Bond Act was passed in, I think it was 2014, and it was billions of dollars that were bonded to the to school districts to purchase technology. And we were in the beginning of the building project when that money came through. And we had already planned for a lot of the technology that many schools used the money for to, to use it. We've already had it in the building project. Um, and so we had replaced all of our switches and all the cabling and, and a lot of the infrastructure that we had. So our allocation was around $900,000. And this is money that is, um, the, the state, when um, schools come to them and say, we want to use this this money, or we actually spent this Smart Schools Bond Act money, the school then goes out and gets a bond and, and then gives that money to the schools. Uh, there's no sunset on it, so we can have that. Uh, we have access to that for, I guess, ever. I don't, I don't know how long. They, they, there is no end date. So we still have almost that whole amount um, left. Um, and we sort of tried to think carefully about how we're gonna spend it. 
Um, I was thinking about spending it on Chromebooks and um, other devices, but then the CARES Act money came in, and so we used some of that for that money for devices, so we didn't have to use as much to Bond Act. So this is one of the of big purchases that we are actually using the Smart Schools money for uh, to replace the camera server um, in both buildings. And that was that was originally put in um, during the last building project and the uh, emergency lockdown button. So mm -hmm. the camera servers, we have to build up capacity because as you get new cameras, newer and newer cameras, they have higher pixels. We add more cameras. It takes up more space. And so we're adding that capacity um, so that we have two months worth of backup um, so that if uh, somebody claims that they slipped and fell in the parking lot, we would have proof that that did or didn't happen. Um, so we are going to be replacing that um, as well as upgrading our lockdown feature where when we press the lockdown button, it automatically calls 911. Uh, which is the new standard for the state um, is, is suggesting. It's not saying that we have to do that, but this new um, lockdown button will, system will do that. Um, hopefully we'll never need to use that, but um, we'll have that, that functionality. So that's what that um, Smart Tools Bond Act was for, and I just wanted to sort of give you a little description about where that came from and, and how we're going to be using that money. Um, and that's it. Is that nine years we got out of the cameras like way longer than anticipated or about? Um, no, that from day that they, they that was about what they anticipated. I was expecting a little bit longer, um, but I'm always hopeful. Right. Um, so, yeah. Thanks. Yep. That's not going to stop anytime soon. It's going to be like, you know. 25 megapixel cameras yeah. in, right? well you know at, at some point at some point it's when enough. you get a camera yeah. out there that can read a license plate that's all you need, you yeah. need to, yeah. to see the moles on the back of his head <laughs> right. um, but the original cameras that we were purchased with the building project were fairly low resolution at that time they were pretty close to the standard um or high high standard but they've gotten better and now I think they've reached what we really need them to do. So we probably don't need to expand anymore and or um, expand in terms of that resolution. So hopefully we'll do it for a while. <laughs> uh, we don't have Holly in the third floor. And then Jim. So the, the first item you already heard about. Uh, the second item, just the science of reading and the reading league, just gave you a little update uh, on a, an overview meeting that we had, and we're continuing to talk about it within the admin team. If we'll do it, if we're able to, and if we want to move forward with a school partnership with them, they would help us very similarly to what the Mid-State Regional Partnership does. It's The Reading League would be focused more on core instruction, Gen Ed. Uh, Mid-State focuses on students with disabilities. So that's a little bit of a difference. Um, and then on my last item, you know, I said the landscape of the special ed department is changing. I do want to thank Annalise Tremper and Sabrina Swartz. Um, they're actually, they Annalise is moving closer to home, so she's sad about leaving us, but she's um, took a job, I think, Hudson Valley, and Sabrina's actually took a job at her alma mater at Tyva Center, so excited for her. Marie Myers, that was a one-year appointment. I just, uh, when we could not find that second school psychologist, she has filled in, I I'm going to be lost without her. Mm -hmm. um, the department's going to be lost without her. She... Yeah, whether it's reaching out for out-of-district students and placements and just her way and her thoroughness and her ability to work with technology, oh my gosh. Uh, but anyway, she's on baby number four, so she's staying home. But it, again, it was a one-year appointment anyway, but I'll be sad to lose her. And then the big one that Pat O'Lilly, you know, you asked Hannah, you know, filling her shoes. Um, I wish Pat the very best. 
she, the other night during our department meeting, I said, you know, the benefit, Pat's strength is that, one, she's a huge advocate for, for just about any human being, but definitely has a, a heart for individuals with disabilities and not typically the, the most easy um, students, but the more challenging ones. She thinks out of the box, she's creative, and she, she just loves people. And she'll go on and I think we'll see her name in the county. I think maybe across the state, maybe the nation, who knows? And this summer she'll be busy directing Camp Badger, uh, which is what her endeavor the last few summers has been. But yeah, um, she's been great to have. And then pleased to announce the school psychologist candidate. I recommend it. Thank you for approving her uh, during the consent agenda. And she was able to zoom in the other night to the department meeting and at least meet the, the department. So we've never had two school psychologists, Lee, and I've chatted about this, that there, she will be um, here at the high school, 712. Hopefully, I think some of her, her desire and her experience, although she's brand new, is that RTI, MTSS, looking at data, what can we do to come together as a team? And I think she'll, she'll help over here. Thanks for giving those ladies to come up to my notes. Thanks for letting us take some time. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and Chris, yes, I'll start um, by we have an obligation, a requirement to submit a foundation aid increase survey. And all through the budget, we talked about the additional foundation or the increase in foundation aid that we received. There was that catch up um, because we received over 10% increase from our prior year. We have to report on that plan, like what we are using that additional foundation aid for. And there are some key um, areas that the state is asking for um, addressing student social emotional health, providing supports for students who are not meeting or at risk of not meeting state learning standards in core academic subject areas, and increasing graduation rates and eliminating the achievement gap are three of those five areas. All of our foundation aid use, so use of that increased foundation aid is supporting, um, maintaining and sustaining those programs, our staffing, those intervention programs and benchmarking and curriculum that we've you know, purchased for these grants. Um, so it's really easy to kind of fill in the blanks here um, for what they're, you know, what we are using that additional foundation aid for um, and how to kind of report on that. Um, and if you have any questions about that as we're going forward, I know we talked about, about it a lot during those budget meetings, um, but you know, just let me know. Um, we're also wrapping up our annual grants and getting ready to start writing some for the new grants for the title and special ed areas, UPK. Um, we'll have be writing those this summer. Um, we're still working through those ARP and ESSER funds. We just finished that targeted review um, and looking at how we can modify those grants to, um, as we go forward and still have some of that funding available to us, how we can use it. Um, as we're thinking about these other areas, we've shifted some of the funding um, from some of those Chromebooks. Matt had a lot of Chromebook, a lot of money set aside for Chromebooks in one of the ESSER grants, and we shifted that to purchase some software Aptigy, um, mm -hmm. which kind of helps us communicate mm -hmm with families outside the outside of the buildings. Um, we shifted that to purchase the new math curriculum. Um, we, Super Kids, um, a science lab, we're looking to put a science lab in the elementary school. So some of those things- Physical space. Physical space. Physical physical space. space. So kind of shifting the use of some of that money that we still you know, have to work through. Um, ooh, with those ARP and ESSER grants. So some exciting stuff there. Um, again, we're really busy in the business office. We have our auditors out for pre-audit two days next week, and they'll be back in July to do the, the whole thing for us. Um, but there's just a whole lot going on. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with the 2023 Summer Academy. If it's okay with the Board of Education, I'm going to invite Mrs. Loomis to not only fact check me as I tell you what's going on, because she's doing so much of it, um, but jump in if you feel comfortable or, or wait. Um, but registration did close June 1st, although if there's someone out there who has a child who needs a seat, let us know, because we, we don't want to miss anybody. Um, but when it closed, we had uh, 152 students, um, grades K through nine registered. Again, this year, we're you know, forward thinking. So um, if you, you know, the curriculum, the instruction is based on the year you're going into. This isn't a remedial program, it's a progressive program. Um, we're able to fully staff with our own faculty and staff again this year, which I'm excited about because um, we have great people and I'm, I'm happy that they're able to do it. Um, the program will, is run a little different this year. It goes from July 10th through August 3rd, Monday through Thursday. It's a longer day, 8.30 to 2.30. Again, that was based on feedback we got from last year's program, uh, feedback from the teachers, students, mostly probably parents, but, but all of that, how, because we're always looking to do it better. Um, the longer school day will allow more targeted time for ELA and math, but also guarantees that recreation period and those enrichment periods, which we're, um, we need to make it fun. It's educational, but it's fun. Um, and some fun is important. And then there's um, our partnership with Cornell Cooperative Extension, extends into summer school with the uh, New York DEC, also scheduling time to work with our students and making healthy choices. Did I miss anything? This is I nice. think you did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's what I was most nervous about. Uh, <laughs> so if you have any questions, you know, before I move on, um, now's a good time to ask them because we'll, I don't know, but Sarah's right there. She does. So. <laughs> So is everything going to be hosted in the high school? Everything's going to be in the high school. Mr. Amen and Mr. Wintermute walked me around today so I could see it. I don't, I can't, I'm not spatially strong and things like that. I need to be in it to figure out where I am and what I'm doing. So yeah, it's all going to be in the high school, including lunch and breakfast. And yeah, we'll probably be outside both buildings for rec, but. And then will it be like last year where some high school teachers are going to be teaching the lower grades and kind of so i we have some high school junior high teachers teaching their grade levels but also our rec we have a rec teacher that is from the high school and have the middle school teachers helping her and we have an enrichment teacher that is from the high school but she's kind of team teaching with an elementary school teacher each week too Cool. And then you're able to find, oh, um, however the process happened, for the most part, a teacher at each grade level so that the kids and going into fourth or whatever yep. would potentially yep. be with their teacher. So every grade level has a teacher that teaches that grade level. And I want to say three or four grade levels have the aides that will also be in that grade level. So the kids get to see at least two adults that they'll interact with next year. Yeah. So how many staff members do you have then? <laughs> Rick probably knows. I don't know if I put staff on the end. Um I wanna say every week we have twenty five ish. Oh, that sounds good. But, okay. <laughs> then but I again, they, should, they, they can job check, so it's right. more than the teachers that were yeah. over the and yeah, and some teachers wanted to work all four weeks, some teachers wanted one week, some teachers wanted to sub for their teacher who couldn't make it for a day. So <laughs> and we were very flexible with that. How does enrollment this year compare to last year? So last year we had 162 okay. kids signed up, but last year attendance was funky. Um, like we had a we had a handful, I want to say at least 15 families that registered that never showed up. Um, so 
this year we have 152. It's I don't feel like it's that big of a difference, and it's, attendance is a little bit better this year. I think it'll shake out. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All set. Okay. Thanks. Um, so Mr. Gelder talked a lot about safety and things we're doing with technology to keep our buildings safe, but we always have a, our eye on safety and keeping our buildings secure for everybody who's on our campus. Um, earlier this month, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Ahart, and Ms. Evanco attended a safety conference. Um, so the three, they learned a lot there. They were excited when they came back, and the three of them along with, I haven't told them yet, but Mr. Raymond and Mr. Gelder, um, will leave a, lead a safety to our safety committee and just doing a comprehensive review <laughs> this year. Part of it, Mr. Gelder did talk to me about this, and we're picking up on it. We'll lead some tabletop um, learning experiences for the administrators and maybe expand that to some other key people throughout the district. Um, and then we will be looking at um, doing a few different drills, not, we certainly will do all the required drills for, um, that we do annually, um, but there are some that we don't need to do annually uh, that we will do probably live. I don't know how much we involve parents, but um, a, a real evacuation to another location. So God forbid we ever need to for any reason. Um, you know, maybe the smoke from Canada is so toxic, we need to get out of this building. Whatever could happen, we'll be better prepared. So um, you'll hear more about that as we plan it. We'll start planning it this summer and then probably put it into full swing um, before we fall or early fall when we have to include students. Um, I had talked with the board just a little bit about getting together um, at the Cornell Cooperative Extension Farm on Cass Hill. And so I'm hoping everybody will be able to make it before our reorganization meeting in July. I've talked with T who's at the farm and we have the space, we have the day scheduled if we can meet there at 5.30. There are three things I'd like to go over with you and Barbara Case, the superintendent of Spencer Van Etten, wanted to go over with her board and we'd love to do it all at once together um, because the three things we're talking about are the shared programs, the ag program that both schools are either trying to grow or regrow um, together and share services and a lot of that will be done at the farm. We're, we're kind of blessed to have a farm right there. Um, also our food service that we've been sharing, we'll talk briefly about that and we'll, because I know a lot of board members will probably be coming right from work or from children or whatnot, we'll provide a meal. And then um, the topic that will probably take up most of our time is discussing our sports merger um, Barbara Case and I will propose um, uh, board resolutions on that. But before we can really put together a board resolution, we, we do want to spend some time talking about our goals with, with the sports mergers. And when I say our, the district, but of course also the boards. And then when we come to some kind of really concrete understanding, then we'll just put it all down and be able to move forward. So that should be a fun evening and then we can come back for our reorganization meeting. Some physical expressions and questions. Okay. I'm just trying to determine what the expectation is for like we're not it's more is it more of a brainstorming session yeah. with them or is it it's like quick. we're trying so, to so hire that, that no we're not gonna, we're not gonna get all the details now but um Barbara and I knew as did the steering committee that we really needed to hear from both boards, get a sense before we could start working on um, any board resolution or policy that both boards would be comfortable with adopting. Um, it really is hopefully going to be more of a social event or as much of a social event as ever, anything else. We'll be able to talk about the successes. We have invited uh, Dr. Terrence Doherty, who's been through it. Not that we're, I, I know we based our model on his in um, Hancock Deposit when we started, but it was never the plan to take what worked for them and retrofit it or make it work here. We understand we're different districts, but he did learn a lot along the way. And even the model that he gave us has changed. So he'll take a little, he'll give us a little of his time to talk about what he learned along the way. Maybe it can help us move quicker or make fewer mistakes. But in the end, 
we have to put together a plan that will work for our districts. And again, getting just spending some time with both boards together to kind of um, get a clear sense of where everybody's at individually and then collectively, um, not just this board and that board, but these boards, then we should be able to move forward. Uh, long explanation for a simple question. But no, I, no, there's a lot. A lot there, there's a lot to it. So this is just the start. I mean, we don't think we can hammer it all out in one evening. That's just not realistic. Um, but we'll pose a few questions. We'll hear from Dr. Doherty about what's worked and what's not. We'll probably ask the initial question, what are your thoughts? We'll get some of that, but not hold anybody to it because we think we'll need more time to think about it after this meeting. Um, but if we frame up the questions right, we'll be able to come back um, to each board with the proposals that I think the boards will be happy with. Will there be a representative for the steering committee there? Yeah, the steering, they're all invited. I'm hoping okay. they can all make it. I know of one that can't, okay. but there'll, there'll be enough representation from both districts um, that um, we'll get a clear sense of, of where they're at. If not, they all know what's happening, so they can either um, talk to someone that thinks most similarly to make sure that their their opinions and voices are expressed there too. So again, it's a time to share all opinions on what's worked for us, what's worked somewhere else, and where do we want to go next. When is the date? It's I believe it's thirteenth. July thirteenth. July thirteenth. So Brett, is that going to be the only meeting that month? Yeah, that should be the only meeting that month. So okay. it's two meetings in one day, but we don't want to do too many of your summer days. So we'll meet up at the farm first. Um, if anybody wants to park their car here and ride up with us, we could do that. Um, but there's plenty of parking at the farm now. We'll start in what is our agricultural class uh, classroom. Um, and that's where we'll have something to eat. And again, it will be more social, but we'll be talking about these things. The food service that we shared, and there's been a lot of success there. The ag program is just you know starting to blossom but I'm really excited about it and we'll be able to see it. And then we'll have some time to talk about our uh, sports movers. And that's the second Thursday of July. So then there's no meeting on the third Thursday, correct? No. We're not actually a board when we're up there. We're not we're a right. We're, we're right. actually just people, people who happen to so, be there talking about it. <laughs> no, but we're not. But what I'm saying is the third Thursday. No, it's no, nothing no, just, it's not, it's not not in yeah. So if you're planning mm -hmm. vacation, Go ahead. No, I was thinking about CSD. Oh. The line CPSC. meeting has to be before the 15th. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Approving yeah. any... That's, all. that's where I went Did to. Did we do this? We didn't do this in July. We probably don't because there's probably... You're not really a board. <laughs> so it'll be August. We are yeah. at the reorg meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, we are at the end of the reorg. Yeah. yeah. Oh, when okay. They leave the... The farm will be coming back here and having the actual right. Line. So if I had yeah. the show right. So the, the, okay. there's about two minutes when we all come down that I'm really in charge because we don't have a board. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the superintendent. So really really I'm really like not a... just doing that. That's two minutes of <laughs> 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 Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. And then, and then we have a board again with officers that don't make any reference. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's it. Um, I did want to give a, a quick shout out to the arts department in both buildings. Amazing shows. So um, on the same night, um, you know, the, at the elementary school, there was an art show and uh, a chorus concert and a band concert that were fantastic. And the, was it a Wednesday that all the smoke settled in Camden? That was the same type of event was scheduled for the high school that had to be rescheduled because the air just wasn't safe. So that happened this Tuesday night. And again, it, it just blew me away um, every, every aspect of it. The um, art that was displayed in the gym and cafeteria really showed the talent of our students, and the chorus and band performance were outstanding. Um, so, uh, again, a lot of credit to our art department, Mrs. Uh, Duffy, Ms. Masters, Ms. Strangle, Ms. French, Ms. Nikin, uh, Mr. Holmes, and I heard from the parents, and I know I wrote this before the high school concert and performance. I had been to the elementary and heard a lot of positive feedback, and I was that confident, and it came true. 
here at the high school, people just thought it was fantastic. I prepare my year on that. Um, before, <clears throat> you know, that's all I have read in um, I, I did notice that Major Soper is AWOL, um, but I want to thank him for his service. He, he's a fantastic leader. Um, I think it's funny that he's made because although he's just a fantastic leader and he's done wonderful support, he, he's um, yeah he's he can be a major supporter. Um, but he, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry he's not here for that. I wanted to thank him for his service and uh, wish him the best. We are to any visitor comments, right? I um, I have an order to put my agenda away. I don't remember if it's board or, or visitors first. Board. Oh, shoot. Right. <laughs> Another board comment. I guess, again, I, this particular senior class seems to have, you know, a special little spark in them that motivates them. And, you know, we give, give them as individuals, they need to be given credit. And their parents, who have been encouraged and supported, but you folks, absolutely, and your staff have really, you've changed so many programs and given opportunities, and you've recognized kids who needed to get a boost or needed to be complimented on their efforts. So thank you for making this such a wonderful place for children to learn and for staff to grow and, and Contribute. That's it. I pass. Yeah, big thank you to Josh. He's been he's been a great voice to have on here. We'll, we'll miss him. Um, and congrats to you guys on finishing up another year. I hope you can after Friday night. I hope you can like take. After Friday, after Friday, after, after, after next Friday. Yeah, I'm sorry. I <laughs> hope you can take a deep breath after when, when, when you know, when it's all done and reflect a little because I know it's just a whirlwind and especially this time of year, I can't imagine. <laughs> so thank you for all that you do. <laughs> now we're back to you guys. Unless it won't. Okay, cool. So we have to go do Kim's, yes. but at eight. Well, so we'll back to exactly the public is done at eight. Eight seventeen. We kind of get the ice cream store. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>